so the reason why you have delayed onset PTSD is because our brain is very powerful. In essence, I like to say, you know, you have the human brain on top, you have the middle brain. And so I can't tell you why, I always can tell you what. But the what is pretty clear that animals are only designed to deal with pretty much short-term stuff. So if you have a rat, for example, and it's being chased by a cat, it's going to be scared, presumably, we assume. Now it gets away, now it's in its hole eating cheese, it's probably pretty happy. It's not thinking, oh my gosh, I, you know, I, I just made it, you know, I, just like uh, Sartre said, you know, being in nothingness and that's, that's how life is. No, most rats wouldn't say that. Most rats would just be happy, right? What humans can do, which is fundamentally different than animals, we can ask why questions. We can think about things in much more abstract ways than animals can, which is great, which is why we're human. But the downside is it enables us to one, traumatize each other in much more horrific ways than animals can, and two, we can think about things for much more longer periods of time. So we can be intensely sad for extended periods of time. We can be intensely anxious about things that may never happen, or may happen in four years. So what this does is it, it overwhelms the middle part of our brain's capacity to deal with it. It starts to make it shut down. So over, because of evolution or whatever reason, our brains have learned to adapt. What we adapt is we push it down. We don't think about it. We constantly think about things. And so we get delayed onset PTSD because our brains have learned that awful things can happen and we can compartmentalize it very effectively. And then it never bothers us. In fact, there are many people that they never have PTSD in essence. They're traumatized, they compartmentalize it, and they live their entire life they never had PTSD. But it's really a factor that people are able to compartmentalize it, and then what happens over time, like I said, is that there's a trigger, something happens that's triggering. It could be an emotional trigger, it could be another traumatic event that maybe is not as bad, but it reminded them of the first traumatic event. Because the middle part of our brain doesn't exist in time. It exists with emotions. So when we have a strong emotion, helplessness, and fear, and just kind of hanging out there waiting to be activated, and we haven't thought about it for a long time, and then we're in a class now that we are a college student, and we feel trapped because somebody's asking us a question, and we don't know the answer, and we're feeling really stupid and helpless, that can trigger us so that we think about it again. At the same time, it's a sufficiently complex interaction that's very difficult to predict which trigger will cause you to have it. So in essence, as a psychiatrist, I'm very pragmatic. If you're doing okay, that's great. Let's just watch you. If you're not doing okay, I wanna help you out. 